Lancaster. And before we get back into this one, though, uh, real quickly, an update here. Uh, Hunter.com, as always, uh, more content, especially with the new season upon us. Uh, expect more content and whatnot in the news section and interviews and stuff. And speaking of that, uh, uh, we have uh, one of our first interview of uh, a couple that are going to be coming up here for the invited teams of actually in Diamond Division. Uh, Emma Boy of Recent Gaming interviewing the captain of Team Recent Gaming over there. And uh, check that out if you would like to get his thoughts on what things are going to be like moving forward and what he expects to happen in uh, his early run at Hunt Tour with Recent Gaming itself. So, again, check it out, guys, at HauntTour.com right there. All right, back to this game, though. We got Midas first pick coming out, and then the uh, Luna response. So already a pretty different game here <laughs> for game three with uh, with the star. Magnus Mora, Parasite Behemoth of the bands, by the yeah. way. Yeah, that first pick, I don't know about that one. Was it these guys the team that first picked the Clanks? No, that was the Shawl team. Um, yeah, Luna first pick, I have no idea what to take from that. Uh, it doesn't seem like a hero worthy of picking, this, or picking up this early on. I mean, it, it doesn't matter if it's in the support or if it's if it's in the mid role. It's just not that. It's not that top tier material. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're talking about how deadlift was banned initially last game, and obviously kind of randomly. So, I wonder if there's potential here to to see such a hero. But we'll see if uh, he makes an appearance. I'd love to see the night on. Just to see how people deal with it. Yeah. It's so frustrating to go up versus. I know when that change first happened, yeah, that that was something I didn't really think about. And I, assume, I assume, like, a lot of people, like, that wasn't something that kind of first went to my mind. It's like, oh, that's right, he can be ran as, like, a suicide out. He can kind of just leech experience from the beginning. But that seems like that's the idea you can do with him now. But it just goes back to that mindset, though. It's like, Invis heroes in general in the competitive scene, It's it, it's you got to be a little careful, of course, because of uh, dust and revelations, so. True that, and compared to a fate, he cannot take cover in the trees, for example. Yeah, something like that. So, or like a scout at least has the movement speed buff. So, Grinix, same kind of deal. Where Nighthound just he runs the same speed. He does have pounce yeah, though. Does. But yeah, but not seeing him at least just yet. So if we do see him, we'll talk more about it for sure. But Rally gonna be coming out with that second pick. So, yeah, All right. Kind of just different here. <laughs> game three. Safe to say. Yeah, I mean, like last game as well. I mean, it was some crazy draft, uh, to be fair. Uh, Shadowblade and Gravekeeper, Hellbringer, Behemoth, all in the same team. It's just a uh, really messed up draft. But hey, it ended up working really well. So hopefully they got a similar plan in mind this time. You know, these four heroes, I want to say, these four heroes, we didn't see any of them in the first two games. I don't think we did. It's so oh, weird we to see a game, a game three start with four heroes in the draft, and none of them were seen in the previous two games. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, I, I feel you. It's, uh, it's really odd to see this kind of development. Uh, let's see what the third pick is going to be here. I mean, they have taken a lot of time to think about these picks as well. They're almost running out, both teams. Yeah, they are actually. Wow. Blue's Hellbringer. So there's one we have seen. <laughs> it's all just last game, in fact. Coming out for S. Shoal here, and they were the, the ones that won it last game, so comfortable with it working again here. And, you know, some decent synergy with the Midas and a rally so far. Also, it looks like kind of shaping up to be one of the main support once again. Mm -hmm. If I were Hellborn right now, I would say that this is like. Okay, Midas is in the mid, Rally is in the suicide, Hellbringer is babysitting. That's what I would take out from Legion's draft. So then I would just say, like, hmm, Puppet Monster should probably be fine versus Rally in a one versus one situation. And then we can draft something like a Pebbles, like they did here. And then they can have a two versus one situation in the mid. And uh, then they have already more or less won or have a really good advantage in two lanes. Um, so I, I like the Hellbringer draft so far. I think it's stronger than the Legion team in terms of laning at least. Yeah. Nymphora going to be the first band now. Swift play to, to follow here, but we'll see how the bands now follow up uh, total. You mentioned, yeah, extra time. Both teams, in fact, uh, three seconds only left for Estel. So not necessarily if that was used very early on in the draft, or I guess just throughout it here and just uh, some of the teams have been thinking about. You see a fun list right there from Quincy as far as the most picked heroes that we have on record and 
Yeah, Rhapsody. I haven't seen that hero in like... Oh, actually we saw that in the first game, but in general it just feels like that hero is tapered off. Yeah. Well, she used to be like the most picked, and then yeah, she got she's tapered off a lot as of late. Still see her, but definitely not as top tier as we used to. Yeah. Moira and Andromeda is more or less like taking her place. Yeah, it's too more popular. Beneficial, supports. yeah. Kraken rounding it up there. This game though, Shadowblade ban. That's a little bit of respect coming out. How really? From last game. Damn, the fact that they respect the Shadowblade. To that extent, though. Yeah. That's, uh, to me, it's very surprising. I don't see, like, if he plays the same way as he did last game, there should be plenty of counters to that kind of playstyle. Like, he was just tanking up big time, so, I mean, if they were to go for, like, some kind of early aggression, then that Shadow Blade would more or less be useful or useless. So, I. Okay, they're gonna ban Clanks as well, so they're quite confident that the Legion team are looking for some kind of, like, hard carry here. And. I mean, I guess you could assume that, seeing as they were running the Hellbringers to babysitting last time, but I would still not say that like a Corrupted Disciple or something like a little bit more gank-oriented could be an option as well. Mm -hmm. It's kind of seemed like that's the team makeup right now, so... Whoa! Not, not that style, necessarily. They go very hard to carry. Damn. Uh, Alright, so this leaves the Hellborn team with one hell of an opportunity in the early game at least to bring a lot of pressure to this Legion team. Uh, Midas of course needs level 4 before he starts dealing the damage and the Dark Blade is not going to be able to do too much and Hellbringer of course is quite weak during the lane phase as well uh, up until that point where he hits level 6. Obviously it's not going to be too tough to actually hit that mark, it's going to happen sooner or later but I still feel like the Hellborn team if they want to they could potentially run a pseudo trial in here with the Puppet Master, for example, Puppet Master, or Luna, something else, and just have uh, Pebbled Solo mid, for example, as yeah. the Thai team's MRR in uh, particular Geo likes to do. They could go with Geo Monster instead. Is that, that... Oh, damn, this is interesting. I love this hero, personally. Yeah, no, I've, I've made that point many a times in the past. He's, he's another Magnus. He really is. Magnus is the most played hero, and the, the competitors, as we saw right there, by a bit, by a lot. 344, and next close is 237. Uh, it's, it really is kind of mind-boggling to me that we don't see this hero more because he is so similar to Magnus and in ways is better. Honestly, is better. His ultimate isn't as guaranteed as strong necessarily in that sense, but if it does connect and if you have some nice initiation on top of it, then it is pretty powerful in the end. So I don't know. For me, I've never really known why Geomancer is not really a pickup hero considering how popular Magnus is, but I am happy to see him here. And they have a little bit too little lockdown for my personal taste, at least, to run the Geo Monster and Warbeast here. It's only the puppet, or it's only the Pebbles and the Puppet Monster. And if the Legion team, uh, in yeah, in particular the Dark Lady, gets a BKB, then yeah, and actually that goes for Tempest as well. Like if the Legion team hits the BKB timings or the Shrunken Head timings, then they're going to be in such a fabulous position, and I wouldn't see them losing a single team fight. They don't have a Tempest Cancellor on the Hellborn side. And, of course, Dark Lady is going to be able to do whatever she wants as well. So, the Hellborn team, they really need to bring a lot of pressure. Yeah. That they do. Now, you know, they do have a puppet. They go that Warbeast final pick on top of that. So, as far as pressure is concerned, he's going to be a little bit behind in that. Other than the Battle Cry, of course, assisting damage for the team. So, that's where that can be most certainly beneficial uh, for them. But I mentioned the Tempest as well on the side of Estral over here coming out. Uh, so caught up with that Geomancer, though. Overlooked those a little bit, but yeah, it's fun seeing the Geomancer. I, I know, Boxy for BMG, it's kind of the last one I remember playing this hero, and doing pretty well with it, actually. And then again, just kind of just didn't see it again <laughs> after that, so. And that had to be like halfway through Season 3. I mean, it's been a while since uh, we've seen Geomancer. It's a, bit, uh, it's a little bit more risky, and it doesn't necessarily have the, faith, uh, like the same farm uh, capability as a Magmus with a Volcanic Touch, for example. Geo Monster, he does have the Earth Grass, but it's not as effective. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I think I, I like the concept of the hero at least. It's a really fun and it's a high, highly skill capped hero as well. There is this guy on the American scene in TMM at least, I can't recall the name, but he has like 60, 70 percentage played Geo Monster. And he's playing on like 1900 plus, and he's like so extremely freaking overpowered with this hero every single time. Like he, he doesn't miss a single dig. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's 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 the other thing too. Like Lava Surge is considered a very powerful ability, and for good reason. Um, it is a line stun compared to the dig, where it's more of like an AOE in the spot. So I guess, I guess that's where you can consider like the line stun aspect of Magnus maybe a little stronger, but at the same time, not really. You know, obviously where the dig with the with the radius, it's if they're kind of clumped up in an area, you know, you can hit them all as well. So, uh, but the distance on dig is obviously much longer than you're going to get from a uh, lava surge. Lava surge was 700 max, where dig is 1250 from the beginning. So. Um, yeah, Zui, yeah, why, 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 hmm? why, why, answer that question for me. Why the hell do we not see this hero more with, with how much we see Magnus? I, I mean, it is a little bit undervalued for sure, but uh, there are still reasons for why it's a little bit risky at the same time. And uh, I'm, I'm quite sure that it's going to become more clear the more we progress into this game. But it's like you said as well with the line stun, of course, that Magnus, if you hit that full key, it's so easy to just get a kill. Uh, attempting to stun several targets in team fights over and over with yeah. while Geo Monster, you know, he more or less needs uh, another stunner to actually set up the day, at least if you want to use it. It's nice that it's a long range, but you're going to need another teammate to help you set that up if you want to use the max range at least. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see what uh, I Love Sanja does for us here to maybe convince us one way or the other. Uh, with this Geomancer, but obviously in a one versus two situation to start here. You saw initially the pull happening actually from the Legion side even. So Yeah, he's already got the lane pushed back, so he's going to get some levels here. That's the and idea. I think Hellbringer is doing the mistake right now, which I see a lot of players do, that he, instead of boxing in Geomancer here, he could be stacking uh, camp. Obviously he can't stack in mid-minute, but uh, he didn't even stack at the First minute mark either. Yeah, he would have to also head over here right now to even get him close, and he's not uh -huh. doing so. Instead, he's just like, yeah, I mean, boxing Geo Monster doesn't really mean too much for him. All he cares about is the experience. He doesn't care if he gets a few last hits here and there. It's better if uh, Hellbring prioritizes getting level 6 as soon as possible. Okay, you see another stat right there, kind of backing up that. Yeah, Ooh, look at the damage, though. Good. On the freaking Earth Grasp, it's insane. Yeah, that, that's the other thing. I mean, again, it really goes back to this. This hero is arguably a better laner than Magnus. Um, that because of that Earth's Grasp ability, it's it's a great harassment tool. It allows him to stand strong in the lane against another another hero, even two in this case. So he has the escape or the initiation with the Q. Uh, w, you know, you know that's a little bit. Obviously, he doesn't have the invis that it may, that a Steam Bath would have. But hey, it's still some decent damage. A nice little slow on top of that. So. He definitely has a strong laning presence, and you see right here, he's going to do some good damage to Hellbringer. He's in a little bit of trouble, though, as I say that. I don't think it's dead, though. Yeah, he should be fine. Yeah, he's fine. He's evading a lot of time, or getting a lot of time, and the Dark Lid actually missed two last hits from that, so I would even say that that comes down to Legion team making a mistake. Geo Monster was... He, he had a dig if he wanted to. He was just waiting with it, saving the mana, and he had a health pot, and he got an additional six blights as well, so he's in a good position down here. Yeah. And look at the mid lane, this predictable guy on Pebbles, he's almost 400 gold per minute for lasting alone. Wow, yeah. 23-0 so far, at three minutes into the game, so safe to say he's near perfect, if not that, and glowing red hands also helping there. <laughs> From uh, the battle cry, of course, so something to keep in mind. Ooh, as I say that, he misses one right there. Just happened to misjudge it, but yeah. Still farming very, very well. Bottom lane, bloodlust kill for Geomancer. Oh, oh my gosh. That's not what you want to happen. Geomancer power yep. to the people. Pretty power strong. to the... Minus. Top lane, he's actually in a lot of trouble right here. We'll come more auto attacks. No, Puppet's not going to get the final one off. Uh, I think he could have gotten that one if he dived. He had mushrooms, Minus didn't. Maybe didn't want to risk it, but I think he could have had it. He had... <laughs> oh gosh. I don't think went... the health pod would have been enough for Minus, but... Uh... Right. Oh well. Game moves on. He just went full uh, robot there for a second, oh. so... <laughs> well, you're back now. You're back now. Is it better now? It is better now. Yeah, it only is, it seems like when it does happen, it's pretty rare, but when it does, it takes like five seconds or so, and then it catches back up. But. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it helps when I reconnect to Skype. This time I just did it immediately as soon as you said it, so... Okay. I don't know, I can still hear you, and I can still see everything in the game. As, yeah, uh, Skype's just as weird. As 
Skype is just weird. Um, anyway, so, but yeah, the point is, could have killed him maybe, but chose not to. Chose to play the very safe route, and so gets, moves on without a kill, and uh, gonna go back to creep farming, and uh, speaking of that, we mentioned how Pebbles is doing great. Puppet Master's doing solid, 22 and 17. Definitely nothing to scoff at. Uh, he wear minus only three and one, but he's level four. Hellbringer in the jungle getting caught out here. Uh oh, Dig coming in. Is going to catch him. Dodges the demon strike as well as a result. Temp is going to do what he can to help. Is it going to be enough? Those are illusions, obviously. And actually, Geomancer, he got two tunnel vision there. Oh, wow. And the neutrals end up killing Hellbringer. I don't, was that necessary? I don't even know if that was necessary or um, not, but. Just as well. I mean, he was low on health. Why not get a free transport back to base? Okay. That's fair. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I, he, he ran straight into it, at least. I think it was fine. Yeah. Worst thing has happened. But uh, the Earth was, was on cooldown when Geomancer oh. initiated. Oh! Oh, God, that's embarrassing. And Listing goes down. Oh, uh, God, it's. <laughs> I have trouble casting. I didn't what see what happened. Well, so Rally went in on a Pebbles. Oh, wait, they can still kill him. If they use the mana ring right now on Pebbles and just compel the Pebbles, then he's dead. But there we go. now they're going to use it. There we go. There's the rally initiation. The elemental void. Uh, they better get this kill. <laughs> and I think they are. Yeah, okay. So a little bit of redemption at least. I mean, they at least finally get the kills. Bottom lane, by the way. Dark Lady going against uh, Geomancer. I think Geomancer gets the kill here. Geomancer gets the kill if he mans up. Yeah. Oh. Could have mounted up a little bit more, actually. And well, if Dark Lady might... kept her, she she did a good job of backing it off there, what she did. Yeah, if true. she kept pursuing a little bit longer, then yeah, that definitely would have been a turn kill. Uh, but yeah, just a quick recap though of the, the rally. It's unfortunate, but he stunned him with the, with the compel, and then he went to seismic slam, and he he was obviously by the time he started it, it was obviously it wasn't gonna hit. But it was like one of those. I don't know why he kept going because it's easy to cancel that ability. It really is obviously, but he chose not to. It went through. It completely missed him. And then he ended up, you know, almost getting a turn kill. In fact, they did get the turn kill on to, I think it was Hellbringer at the time. So a little bit embarrassing. But like I said, they at least killed him in the end in that middle lane. So something out of it. Slowing down Pebbles a little bit, who once again has been off to a great start. What's down here? Veldorot Pebbles. He finds Hellbringer. Easy kill. And she shrieks after she dies. All right. It really just use a Veiled Wrath and run down there? Yeah, I guess so. And he was looking for a kill on Dark Lady to get down. Oh, there's well, another one. That one hit. <laughs> Lined up that Both one mid heroes, like going for these kind of really risky kind of plays, in my opinion. I mean, they paid off, so well played on their part, but still, I mean, if that doesn't pay off, for example, Rally to just go blind into the enemy forest and hope to find a kill onto Warbies, like, that's a lot of gold wasted in the mid lane at the same time. Mm -hmm. I mean, as, as, as soon as Warbies sees you, he should just activate the Metamorphosis and he should be fine, so. But, uh, yeah. I'll play by both mid-heroes, I guess. I'm a little curious. Not something I find myself really observing too much, but actually he's going to jump on a Geomancer right here as Dark Lady. And Geomancer digging time. He gets it off. Will it stun Tempest? It will, and he gets oh, a distance. Okay. Tempest, he needed a sidestep there a little better and maybe could have tried to set up the kill, but good get away from Geomancer. I think he underestimated the range of yeah. the dig, actually. It looked like it, at least. He was like, okay, I'm just going to head Keeps a little going. bit to the left. But yeah, exactly. Not enough. Keeps going. Um, well, as, well, I was going to say, Dark Lady, she actually went level 4 Taint Soul. I, I know level 2 of this ability is considered uh, pretty good, you know, to really help with the last hitting and whatnot. But I think 3 and 4 is a little overkill with it. Um, all it does, I mean, it increases a duration, I guess. But the damage increase is kind of eh. Uh, I think the Dark Blades, you could argue, is probably... The yeah, better I agree. idea. Don't really need a taint soul. Not to level four at least. Not for a melee hero. Yeah. Would have been one thing if you just wanted to. No, actually, the cooldown remains the same in all levels, so there's really no point on leveling it up. Of course, it adds a little bit more damage. And look at the mid lane. Geomonster is here. Rally compel. Oof. Saw it coming. Just in time. Yeah, Pebbles was charging in, so clearly Rally knew something was up. And he was correct on that, so good getaway there. Geomancer has that ulti, the Crystal Field. We'll see if uh, that comes into play here shortly. Possibly could have been there, but missed the jump, so no Crystal I'd probably need yet. to wait until the pull key hits on Pebbles, actually, mid lane. That Seismic Slam connects this time. The combo, oh. though, it stops the Elemental Void. He gets hit by the Demon Strike. The Death Boil misses, though. 
And Pebbles is on the run. Regenerate on a rally. Going to try to get in here. Secure the kill still here. Really oh, wants this. Don't go too far, though. Warbeast in the meantime, not sure what his plan was. But that's going to backfire whatever it was. And he goes Oh, out. he gets a kill at least. He gets and something out, maybe? Nope, the Demon Strike! Oh, the Chuck oh. to get the kill. Pebbles of all heroes comes back in to secure it. And a one for one there. So, yeah, a little curious from Warbeast. But, as you said, they do get the, they, they get the counter kill. On a pebbles, actually. This GPM continues to look pretty good as yeah. Rally can pass And Puppet Master is uh, almost uh, bulky here by Pebbles as well. By the 10-minute mark, he's already up at 1.7, so he's doing a really good job finding the farm. Yeah. Three and one. Well, what is this? Rally, that's just an illusion, so... Never mind, Luda getting boxed out there. Speaking of Puppet Master, actually, he just finished his Whispering Helm. Been pretty quiet this game for the most part. 340 gold per minute. Again, overall, monster, though. Be careful in bot lane, by the way. <laughs> I don't know what they're thinking. Doing this freaking gank attempt with a war beast. Like, it makes no <laughs> sense whatsoever. Like, he was, GM monster was like, okay, I'm low health. I'm going to go down here and hope the Dark Lady jumps me. And then we turn it around. But yeah. when he does, he's like, okay, maybe Can't this wasn't the best <laughs> idea. I got a war beast here to aid me. Can't really do too much. And he gets <laughs> just beaten down instead. That was so funky. Yeah. Definitely uh, not the not the greatest decision there, and Geomancer pays with his life for it. But more importantly, it gives a free solo kill to Dark Lady, and that's something you don't want to be doing if you're uh, if you're a team Zenzig. And you see Wimpo G here now, 350 plus gold per minute. The Rune Cleaver well in the works. I thought he had the mana tube. Yeah, the mana tube is being delivered. Lane, oh, every single spell missed, missed, unfortunately, and Public Monster gets the tower as well. Yeah, tried. But no All cigar. Right. That was a rally there as well. A cigar. Those are not puppets. They're Dark Lady Striders, are they? Okay, no. <laughs> yeah, here it is, Team Vest. Because they're Striders on the Courier, but they got delivered to Hellbringer. That makes sense. Uh, Warbeast, the Abyssal Skull. He's still working on that here. But doing his I'm, best. I'm actually surprised that Warbeast is still managing to maintain this kind of call per minute, even with two dabs and a lot of them moving around. Mm -hmm. I, I just wonder what he would have been able to achieve if we were just focusing 100% on farming. Would it be, would it have been like 350 plus call per minute? I guess it would. Well, there's a combo. Again, Crystal Field, it's strong. It's just a matter of can you get it lined up with something else, and right there, that was easy. Pebbles comes in, and you know what? Did he have Field Rock? I assume he had Field Rock. Because other than if he did not, then that's just simply Dark Lady not paying attention with his Ward of Sight. <laughs> but, yeah, probably Veldrot. Yeah. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt there. Uh, I, I mean, Pebbles was down there once earlier, and then he did use the Veldrot as well. So recent results indicates that, uh, yeah, he did have Veldrot. Yeah. Look at down here, by the way. Hellbringer is like, well, he's standing here lurking in the trees a little bit. He's got level 6, so I wouldn't mind him actually trying to set up something in the mid lane instead, rather than down here. Or actually, maybe he's waiting for Darklight to come, to come back and get a kill on Geomonster. He did pick up the Steam Boots, though, so he's a little bit tanky. Yeah, we've seen a lot of those being picked up here. Look at that. Actually, everyone on the Hellborn team has Steam Boots, other than Aluna, who has the Striders, of course. So. Hell, the Legion team, kind of a similar story. Three of their heroes have Steam Boots. Honestly, Darklady also... She's a hero that you, that tends to get Ghost Marchers, actually. But mm. getting the Steam Boots here instead. I actually think that this is the right decision in this game, looking at the lineup. Like, you see the power throw, for example, from Aluna. The Pebble is fast, bulky. Assassin Shroud is going to come up here from Puppet Monster in the near future. Ghost Marchers into Rundax would have been a glass cannon build. So, yeah, you could have, like said, that the Ghost Marchers might have been able to secure one or two kills on Geo Monster, perhaps. If you're all lucky, but uh, this gives you a lot more self sustain and survivability. I'll look at this. Yep, Geomancer in a lot of trouble right here. Pebbles is nearby, and he's find the right target, though. Way to jump, they not in time. Geomancer goes down, and now Pebbles is in trouble. The other one's up, it's gonna whiff, though. Whew, they wanted to get the kill on him, too, but uh, Dr. Retroom got a little too antsy there and misplaced and it. And now so. he buys the portal key. <laughs> Damn. Are you kidding me? Talk about shit, the timing. He should have gone for the Astro now instead, though, when it was whiffed. Yeah. Now Tempest, he's going to show that portal key on top of that. And again, he doesn't have the element Sell deployed. It. Sell it. There's still time. <laughs> My friend picked the Astro, especially versus this, like the Hellborn team with all that burst damage. An Astro would have been perfect. 
Well, yeah, and there's even more justification as you're kind of getting at it too. It's actually Pebbles jumps in, finds Hellbringer, but at what cost here? Pebbles in trouble. Only for a main support Hellbringer. He goes down. Not the worthiest trade. However, here comes Geomancer. Crystal Field is out. Midas already dead, though. Not even necessary. As Dark Lady jumps on a War Beast. Ain't going to chase him down, though. Of course, a little bit of back and forth brawl right here. Geomancer thinking about going back in, but decides it's best not to. So. They should swap the heroes around, though. Warbeast should not be the one running with its team. That should be Puppet Master, and Warbeast should be the one farming Forest. It makes no sense that Puppet Master is the one that's not active in the team fights, while Warbeast is the one running around. Yeah. Tempest, going back to him, though, again, he just used Element of Void. They saw it, so really, even now, for another 120 seconds, this portal key is not going to really be the biggest threat here. Uh, for Tempest, so really until about 18 minutes into this game or so, will the Hellborn team need to actually be somewhat concerned about an Elemental Void happening for the time Yeah, being. the lanes are so stagnant as well. I mean, Geomonster is down here once more, and it's the same story over and over. I mean, Dark Lady is not even farming at this point. The Legion team should at least be able to secure the farm for Dark Lady. They need five people down here. Oh, Hellbring gets found. He actually got his Q off right there. Geomancer missed his dig. It doesn't matter, though. Gets the kill still. And Geo or uh, Rally also gets picked off. Dark Lady all of a sudden by herself. She didn't have cover of darkness. They know that she's by herself, though. They're going to dive this tower right here. TP is coming in. Dark Lady charging oh. strikes is up. And she's going to avoid right here. So, yeah, the Hellborn team realizing it was going to be a little too risky. I don't know, though. With no Elemental Void especially, I think that they could have actually kind of committed yeah, they, to that. Yeah, they could have easily committed to that if they just... I don't know why if, Why isn't Puppet with them, though. That's, like, the main concern. Like, if he were just down there, they could have easily gotten three kills, but he's, for some reason, busy pushing mid. Yeah. Which isn't a bad thing, it's just not as good as it could have been. Or Warbis is one that should be pushing powers, not the Puppets. <laughs> True. Doesn't have a TP on him, though, currently, so you could argue that, well, he should, but still, yeah, doesn't have one on him, so not able to join his Pebbles. Finds a free kill on a Midas right there. Double damage in the glowing red hands, you guarantee. <laughs> 421 damage right now. It's 17 minutes into the game. That is absurd. And actually, he's going to, oh, he almost found Hellbringer. That would have been an easy kill. <coughs> Unable to, though. Instead, we'll just kill a Wolf Commander quickly. That is Poor scary. guy. Yeah. Puppet uh, finishing the assassin shot, by the way. So has that now. So kills, ideally, he's still zero kills and zero assists here. Has not been involved yet. That's an item that ideally will allow him, let him, though. Yeah, they should go for Congor. There's no vision from the leading team, and even if there were some vision, I think the Helmond team is confident enough to take a team fight at this point. So with War Beast Wolves, with the Battle Cry. With Abyssal Skull, that should be an easy kill. Or an easy Congor. Yeah, about 18 minutes in right here. They're still grouped up in the, the middle of the jungle. Legion jungle looking for an opportunity. They may find one right here. Rally. Nope, Pebbles just happened to jump in and combo the creep wave. Man, if he's patient, a couple more seconds. But here comes an Assassin Shroud. Voodoo puff it up. Rally in trouble. He's going to be caught. And yes, he will be killed off in the end. TP support coming in, but clearly just too late there. So they get Way something out of it. Uh, Legion team, they need to secure the Dark Lady to the farm. The Rune Cleaver, she needs it as soon as possible, but they're not grouping up as five people. They should. They should be standing uphill in the Legion Force and stack for Dark Lady, I feel. Either they have to go for some kind of gank attempt, but you cannot just sit by idle on the lanes and wait for a Hellborn team to make their move. That's not going to result in anything good. Dark Lady, the Rune Cleaver, it's... Does she have one broadsword? Yes, okay. The Wing Courier has one on it, so... Yeah, she's actually doing okay. I mean, 340 gold per minute, seeing as how pressured she has been, and how little team support she has been having, I I mean, she's doing okay. And there's still, like, all it takes is one team fight, and the Legion team definitely got the heroes to do so, like True. the Tempest Ultimate. I mean, if he gets a BKB, sooner or later he's going to get a BKB, hopefully at least, and... They, they, have no, they don't have a Tapas Counselor, yeah. so the game is far from over. Yeah, I wonder if that was one of the main reasons they final picked that Tempest. I think that was their fifth and final pick, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, uh, no, they were Dark City last. And it, well, they, but they get Tempest, uh, yeah, as you're pointing out, though, they do not have a stopper once he has that shrunken head here. So 
That's uh, a little bit concerned for uh, Team Zenzi. Is that what is it? <laughs> I just butchered that, didn't I? Team Zenzig. There we go. Over here on the Hellborn side. It was to okay. So yeah, Dark it was for them. So I was right there. Uh, to Pebbles jumping into Hellbringer. It's a quick and easy kill there. So Hellbringer. Yeah, I feel like he's died a lot this game. Yeah, six tests already. <laughs> he's not having the friendliest of times. That is not. Hellborn team, they should just... I don't know if they want to wait for the next set of items, they could, but they should go for the Conqueror attempt and just go for that token of life, and after that I feel like they're almost strong enough to break the base. Maybe not break the base, seeing as they are versus the Midas with that counter push ability, but they could at least take all the tier 2 towers with that token of life and secure complete map control. Top lane, Rally heading up here. Puppet Master is going to fall back though before anything happens. <coughs> So it continues to uh, get further ahead with him and his team at 99,000 golden experience. So it just keeps going back to you know, this Legion side is going to be very reliant on winning an upcoming team fight. If that doesn't happen, then the chances of them winning this game is going to be pretty little as they have fallen behind quite a bit here. Dark Hoodie, though, the Rune Claver, that's one of the, also the other ideas that she just starts to flash farm like crazy now, which definitely has potential, as you're pointing out. I mean, even before the Rune Claver, GPM's actually not been too bad. Now that she has it, expected to go up and up. Good bottom lane here. Gonna maybe try to There's set something. There's a haste rune onto the monster, so yeah. he should be fine. He's gonna be fine, yeah. Gets in a pop it. My turns around. If and they jump him right now, that he's dead. But uh, uh, nothing range. He hit it. Malphus comes out, but it was before the dig happened. However, the uh, the Q right there from Elbring of the Demon Strike actually does get the fear off the Elemental Boy. This one lands. And Geomets are in trouble. Puffmets trying to kill Tempest first. Ain't gonna happen. Pebbles. He is going to die as well, but Warbeast is here with Puppet Master. Down goes Midas. Rowley getting pulled back in. He'll fall as well. And a hat trick coming out for Wazoo on the Warbeast. He's going for the quad kill. He won't get it, but that's because his teammate gets it. A smackdown kill. It's a genocide for Team Zenzig. Wow, that turned quickly. That was a nice attempt by Legion Team with the Tempest Void and all, but uh, the response from Hellborn and the preparation, that the fact that they had five people down there was not something the Legion Team expected. Um, just gonna snowball out of control now for this Hellborn team, I'm afraid. Level 16, Puppet Master 3-0 oh, and 2. I feel like the Hellborn team really stepped up their game here in game number 3. 22 minutes in, it's now a pretty big lead here for Team Tensig. And yeah, they were the ones that won the first game. Obviously, Eschel coming back and uh, winning that second game, thus forcing this, this third and final game. But Tensig right now in a very good spot after this last fight. And that goes back to what I was just saying right before that. And we were talking about as well that just they're going to need to win in a big team fight is Eschel. And if they lose it now, they're going to be behind quite a bit even more. And yeah, it's not looking good now. It's nearly 23 minutes in. You got this Puppet and a Warbeast who are both now really starting to get that gap against the Dark Liddy. Puppet 523 gold per minute. Uh, has the full Hellflower. Warbeast, a shrunken head. If he wants it, he has it now. Um, and they're going to go for Conger on top of that. And this is going to be a quick, quick Conger kill. I thought it like Warbeast to gold per minute, like 450. I'm really surprised that he's able to maintain that kind of gold per minute, seeing as he has been so mobile and he's been running um, all through the map during the entire game. But I guess it might be good coordination between him and Pebbles at the same time, using Battlecry every single time Pebbles jumps and he gets assist gold, because he does have nine assists. So yeah. I guess that plays a big role. Puppet Master. <laughs> you see Dark Lady filled something up. I, mean, I think they had the war that he yeah, has spotted him coming over anyway. So, But he's still chasing. Not going to get anyone, though. Going to take the wrong turn. Or maybe the right turn, depending on what you were looking for right there. True. Well, he got some Ancients instead. So not the worst thing ever. Does scare them off, nonetheless, and forces them to just run rather than farm themselves. So Dark Liddy is going to do her best to try to get elsewhere. And, you know, usually after the Ring Cleaver, the idea of an Abyssal Skull might be something that we see a lot of Dark Liddies would go, but this time she feels like she needs a Shrunken Head ASAP. And I mean, I can kind of get why. A lot of jump here. You got Puppet Master, of course, so wants a Shrunken Head. <laughs> uh, get back to the base now. Don't let uh, the Hellborn team take any damage on your t base tower, please, because if they break down the base tower, there's no way they can defend the racks. Like, they need to punish the Hellborn team for doing this, but they're not. 
If the tower falls, I mean, the Rax is open, and there's no way the Legion team can harass the Helmer team away from this. Rally, he's going to try for something. Cover from Target is all co also coming out. Remember, that's a pretty big deal right there. Shrugging it for more. We saw Malphys happens, and now Geomancer jumps in with a crowd. Look at the drive. The <laughs> Elemental Void, though, it hits all five right there. But do they have the follow up? The answer come is on. not really. Aluna goes down. Puppet will fall, but he had the token. And now there's the turn on a Dark Lady. So that was really one of the better Elemental Voids you can ask for. But that's just the classic case of, unfortunately, not enough follow-up. Uh, a little bit more damage, like one buyback on Rally, for example. Yeah. That would have been a been genocide, big. more or less. Damn, unfortunate. And they get the but racks, and they get on out, and yeah, you, you got to figure the steam here of Estuel. It's just, it's really, it's running, running low <laughs> for them right now. Yeah, it's, that's going to be a quick kill on Hellbringer to secure it as well, and they'll get the ranged racks just for good measure. Well, that's what he wants, at least. He's so trying to deny it, really. And he gets it. Yep, it's all but over at this point. I don't know if Estelle can really come back in this game here. No, the Shrunken Head on Tempest is not really going to matter too much at this point. I mean, yeah. you can even get a Savage Mage if you're a Puppet Monster here in the near future, and uh, voila, problem solved. Um, I do think that the Hellborn team drafted really well here in game number three. Expect for the fact that they don't have a Tempest Cancer, which is really risky. But uh, other than that, I feel like they executed the draft much better than in game number one and game number two. Mm -hmm. So credits for them at least taking the series, and that means that they are in gold? Yeah? No. Or is it Not silver? yet, actually. If they lose, they're guaranteed silver, but a win here doesn't necessarily guarantee you gold, though. I'd have to double check on that in a second. Uh, after this match, I'll confirm for sure, but I think you would at least still need to win another round to actually be in, if I'm not mistaken. So, still a little bit of work to do. Right and there's here. still a lot of teams left, actually, here. Yeah, In the exactly. loser bracket, especially. So, still got some work to do, definitely. Placement match. The losers of losers bracket, right? 16, okay. And anyway, yeah, I'll look over that here after this uh, to confirm what the deal is there. But uh, yeah, you lose here, you're going to be in silver. And right now, it looks like Keshul is on their way to starting in the silver division, which again, it's not the end of the world, but uh, a team that has been gold in the past, they'll probably be a little disappointed here. Most and this problem is sure it's not lucky with uphill misses. Yeah, right. Actually, I'll take forever to get a killer axe. Oh, there's a jump actually. Rally going for the seismic slam. A pebbles holding his ground. He couldn't get the seismic slam off. The crystal field hitting as well. So again, the jump for the Legion team solid. But that time they now if they actually had the element to avoid that time, that actually could have been something. But they did not. It was still coming off cooldown, and they're just going to easily clean up. So yeah, just a matter of time now before they throw in the play. Refusing to concede. They're still looking for that uh, god hole onto the Tempest, but uh, I'm sorry boys, it's not going to matter. Even if they hit it at this point, it's not going to be enough damage. Or maybe it is, but you don't have the Malphas for another two minutes, so the setup is going to be extremely difficult. 28 minutes in, 28,000 gold lead and experience lead oh. just about, so. And those are yeah. numbers that you do not like to see if you're the opposition here. But again, knowing that uh, last year means it's over anyways. Might as well grind it out, make them finish it the old-fashioned way, as I say. And seems like that's could be where we're headed here. For a yeah, team since the Hellborn team is not too interested in taking the fight, not without the Puppet Master at least, so they're going to wait for him to resurrect and uh, then potentially and hopefully go for the last set of racks. Yeah, they ain't going to throw this. That's not in their plans here to do that, so I'm going to make sure to secure it for sure. And, you know, I'll start getting into this conversation, too. <laughs> I know it's – I talk about it at the very beginning of this game, but I really want to go back to that. Sure, I, I, I personally – I have some fun with you every now and then. You know, they hear, like, Hammerstorm, I, I joke, like, Berserker. It's, I understand. I really do why we don't see those heroes like that. But at the same time, it would be fun to see them, and I think there is kind of potential. As there's more fights breaking out here. They're trying to get pebbles, but you see their response right away from Geomancer, and they just melt. Another 
okay elemental void, but it doesn't really matter. Gonna be canceled immediately, and it's just gonna be cleaned up. So there we go. GG. Well played. Are being called now. Um, but really, Geomancer is one of these though where. He's honestly probably at the top of my list in terms of heroes we just do not see that I just don't get it. I really do not. I think Geomancer is the most underrated hero in Han right now. Um, I'm not saying that because he he did okay this game. Because, again, it just goes back to his skill set is so good. And it's so similar to a hero like Magnus. For how much we see that hero, as, as the stats say, he's the number one by a lot picked hero. The idea that we do not see a very similar hero with arguably better points to him in certain places, I do not yeah, get. He's a very dominant laner, at least. We saw that early on in this game as well with that um, third ability of his. Uh, and he even got a first part in this game, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he did. So, he had a really good or a solid performance here, at least. So, yeah, potentially, if someone is looking at this game, they might uh, be like, hey, yeah, Jay Monster could actually be... Uh, <laughs> Nice replacement for uh, the cases where Magnus is banned out or not an option. We will see. Yeah. I mean, I know there's a lot of heroes, but if, if they haven't realized it by now, I don't know. I may, I, maybe I'm missing something. I, w I would love to have that to kind of bring that up, actually, in conversation with uh, some of the top tier players and see why. <laughs> see why, maybe, but who knows. Anyways, what we did learn from this series is that uh, Team Zenzig, at least today, the better team, and they take it two games to one over Estrel, and again, they're staying alive here in the loser's bracket, moving on to the next round, where uh, they will actually be playing in the next round here later today. So congratulations to them, trying to continue to stay alive. So also on that, as I was trying to figure out for certain, um, the placement matches. So it looks like, okay, so tomorrow, if you make it to tomorrow, you actually... <clears throat> You're not guaranteed gold yet, but you'll be playing for a spot in gold. So if you make it to the first round tomorrow and then you win tomorrow's matchup, then you're going to be in gold at that point guaranteed. So there's still a little bit more work to do for Team Zenzig here before right. that's uh, happening. And then, of course, you know, even a little bit further, if hey, they finish top three, you're going diamond on top of that. So Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, everyone is going to end up here in the loser bracket sooner or later. Everyone expects uh, one team, so yeah. 